I'll just let it kick in. Come on. Hi guys, welcome back to Canary Cast. It's been a while for me personally. Nice to be back here. Hope you're all well. Um, the Daniel Parker era at Norwich is well and truly over. Um, it was sort of coming, but in the end it was unexpected to be fair, Jacob. Especially after a win. We were yeah. saying in the week, you know, there was there was rumours coming, or saying to one another in the week, that yeah, rumours were coming in. Whether only lets out in the press what he wants out. And you just think those sort of things were starting to be like, OK, is there going to be question soon but then that win against Brentford the players were playing for him it was a battling victory and yeah we, we obviously met each other up in the evening and the phone went absolutely wild didn't it yeah. with both of us saying he's gone and it's like wow that's it's a shame because four and a half years have been a brilliant journey and some rare longevity in football which doesn't happen it's the right decision that doesn't stop yeah. it hurting uh and feeling emotional about a guy who's put everything into this football club deserves recognition but it is it's the right it's the right move to sack him. Mm-hmm. It depends who you're replacing with if it's the right decision overall. Yeah, I mean, personally, I thought, oh, that's so harsh to do it after a win, especially after everything he's done for the club. And I was reading Michael Bailey's article on The Athletic yes. on the Sunday. Um, and he was sort of dragged into the away dressing room. Weber was waiting for him and sort of said thanks, but no thanks. Um, which it's I thought savage. was a really... Very it savage. was, yeah. Fair play to Weber for, for having the guts to do that. It was obviously predetermined that he was going to go. Yeah. Um, but in a way, it was I suppose it was sort of nice to finish on a win for, for him personally. Yeah, going forward, I think, as Michael's brilliant article says, on the Thursday, he went to a dealer and Michael Wynne-Jones saying, yep, yeah, Weber was like, right, I think it's time for a change. Friday, they kind of finalised everything. Players were told, Grant Hanley was told before before Farker, which I kind of understand, but then still a little bit dodgy in my mind. Then obviously Saturday, he has the game, no disruption, gets a good win and it's completely out of the blue for him. He, he doesn't, for me, doesn't go over to the fans as he normally would um, if he had any clue about it. Yeah. Um, I think he'll be disappointed, Farker. I think he always felt like he had 110% backing from Weber. Maybe a little bit too comfortable at times with that backing and not almost being edgy um, that interview he did with everyone it seems very odd now Stuart Weber but maybe that was just uh, yeah. uh, come on put the pressure on I think Leeds was was that bad and we we both watched it together didn't we it was that bad that I can see why he's made the change and yeah. depending on who comes in it is, it is the right decision because Daniel Fark unfortunately at the minute is not good enough to keep a team up in the Premier League yeah completely agree the Daniel Farker era is over um, final reflections on Farker uh, Jacob and then we'll um, and then we'll go yes. it's been He's been probably my favourite manager in my lifetime, especially after Lambert went to Ipswich. He probably is my favourite now. Yeah, I love the Paul Lambert era, but yeah, he's muddied that water completely with everything since. Daniel Fark just, he brought us back together when that club yeah. was really at a low. It was just that, emo- and I don't really feel that emotional normally of managers leaving and stuff like that, but he's got and really given us that emotion. He clearly cared, cared about this football club, probably could have gone on to bigger and better things, but... Yeah, he, you can tell he bleeds yellow and green. It's unfortunate. He'll, he'll be absolutely fine, though. He's gone and he'll go and get future good jobs and and maybe maybe one day come back. Who knows? Yeah, definitely, definitely. But yeah, special manager. And thanks for everything, Daniel. It was an absolute bloody pleasure to watch that, most of it anyway. Right, let's move forward then, because we've got a name linked with the role. Supposedly, we are down to two candidates. Stuart Weber has chosen two and he's trying to get one of them in position. Um, the one that seems the favourite, and a lot of money has gone on him overnight, is Norwegian Chetil Knutsen, I'm going with <laughs> on the pronunciation. Bit of a difficult one, but I've looked at a couple of sources and I think it is Chetil Knutsen. Um, Jacob, initial reaction to that? First, I just want him in charge, firstly, just to <laughs> the Norfolk accent to pronounce Chetil Knutsen. <laughs> it's going to be uh, one that's a bit Knutsen, but... Um, But yeah, we'll see. Um, This stinks of Stuart Webber, doesn't it? Out Mm. of the names that we've seen, the Telegraph have just posted, we'll go on to in a bit about Lampard and Smith being, Dean Smith being uh, kind of the the two front runners for it. Like you say, there are apparently two. This guy looks like the one that would be Stuart Webber-esque. He's always got on about, he prefers going on the continent Europeans because their coaching qualifications are a hell of a lot more advanced than English coaches, which is very true. That's why Farker was in instead of, you know, any other English coach that came from the fourth division of Germany and still had a better upbringing in Weber's mind. Knutsen, yeah, Norwegian, has done an incredible job. A really, like, you cannot, yeah. it's almost football manager-esque how he's taken 
Birdo Glimt, we're going to say. <laughs> Probably yeah, that pronunciation. We know what you mean. Okay. We'll go for it, mate. Uh, yeah, we were very, like, before a couple of years ago, really just almost a bit like Norwich, second division, first division, very, very small, 8,500 capacity stadium. And he's gone and taken them to winning the league last season, now in the Europa Conference League, which is Tim Pot, but has gone and smashed Roma 6-1, was Roma's second string side, went away to Rome, drew 2-2 with a full strength Roma side. It's against Jose Mourinho as well, by the way. This guy is Massively essentially, overachieving. Dan- essentially is. Daniel Farker with a bit more of an advanced... Um, step before he's come to Norwich in my mind I wouldn't say this is the greatest league in the world I think Premier League's a massive step up but he's a guy that loves possession loves high energy Mm. 4-2-3-1 almost goes at times to almost a pep formation where he brings the 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 wing backs inside into midfield loves keeping the ball but uh, yeah he's got a very high reputation at 53 probably looking at it now and he's probably thinking I want to make that next step sooner Mm. rather than later yeah, he seems to have a, a, a reputation for developing players and being very yeah. philosophy based and that comes first and all that stuff, yeah. which very much like Daniel Farker, it does sound right up Stuart Weber's street. Um, been at Bodo Glimp since 2017. I think he was initially assistant manager for a year and then has taken the job. But like Jacob said, massively, massively overachieving. Uh, the one thing I did look at and thought, oh, I don't know about that, is the 4-3-3, four, four, three, which I've got no problem with. Yeah. I like that formation, but it's possession based, which... Yeah. Also was Daniel Farker, so it fits in that sense. But I thought the the players Stuart Webber bought in the summer are screaming for more of a counter-attacking system. And this doesn't sound like a transition to that. This seems like more of the same. Yeah, this it, and we, we've said this a lot to one another, haven't we, about the counter-attack and a Nuno kind of coach coming in who would kind of structure you a lot better and then be able to kind of make sure you're tight at the back and then go and use the likes of Rasitra Jolly, Cantwell, if he's <laughs> available, Pookie, yeah. all on the counter-attack. Um, but Stuart Webber's ego and actual desires seem to want to take over from that. And it's still, no, I want Norwich City as a front foot facing Premier League side, which, mm, yeah, brave mm. that. I would prefer, like you say, someone who is a lot more, not defensively minded, but, you know, sorts that defence out Cautious. first. Yeah. You can't keep conceding 20 plus goals in, in the Premier League and think you're going to be able to stay up, especially when our goals going the other way is, is not great either. So mm. sort one problem out before you plug plug the back door, before you try and, you know, capitalise on opportunities. Um, but yeah, if, if he wants this style, then it's great to watch when you're, you know, dominating a lower league. But it'll be fascinating to see it. It's, the whole model is changing in terms of Webber's never sacked a manager before in his time as a sporting director. So it's a huge call for him. And he obviously feels like whoever he does get in is an uh, improvement on Daniel Farker. Yeah, sure. Knutson does seem like a really good fit. Um, there are other names being thrown around, the usual suspects. This To me, they feel a bit like lazy links with uh, Lampard, Dean Smith, just fresh out of a job. Lampard. I mean, what do you make of that? When I first heard it, I just thought, no, I don't really fancy that. And I can't see Weber doing that. Very interesting that Lampard's name is in and around it and the in the nose Mm. are suggesting it, which, you know, John Percy from The Telegraph is a is a big name. He doesn't normally get things wrong or he'll go and do his research on that. For me, I don't see Frank. Frank Lampard is a polar opposite of what I can see Stuart Weber doing. The, the huge name, the global kind of background and everything. He, he's bigger than Norwich, to be honest, isn't he? Yeah. Um, in yeah. terms of his playing career. Is he good enough? I don't think so. I, I would personally prefer Daniel Farker to Frank Lampard yeah, I would. as a football manager. When we saw both of them in the same league, yes, OK, Frank Lampard drew against us once and beat us once, finished sixth with a better squad, in my opinion, mm. and we finished top. Um, I don't think he's good enough defensively, structure-wise. Even with Chelsea, they always conceded goals. You just look back through his three seasons as a football manager, every time his defence is pretty appalling, to be honest with you. And that's exactly what we don't need right now. And even when watching the teams, it almost feels like, yes, that he wants the ball, but there's no real structure as to what they're going to do with the ball. That's just my personal opinion. Um, he does love to develop youth players. Which I, don't know if, I don't know if he does, though. I've got a bit of an well, argument Chelsea's for that. Chelsea's youth players. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, he had Mount, uh, Tamori, and who else did he have at Derby? Aloni, really good one. Was it Wilson? Harry Wilson. Wilson, yeah. Um, Obviously, they're good enough to get you out of the championship anyway. He's not developed them. He had a very good squad finish sick. And then he played, obviously, Mountain for uh, Tamori at Chelsea anyway. They're the same players. Um, I'm not totally convinced from that aspect on Lampard. I also think he'd won a lot of money with the Derby thing. Yeah. Signed Jack Marriott for over £5 million. 
A lot of those players are on That's big, on. big wages. He himself will be on big wages. You'll get players wanting to play for him. And maybe if you're looking at it as Norwich want to take that step up in terms of being a bigger name, then you have to go and get that big name manager. But for me, it's a no. I, I've always looked at him and gone, he's, he's, he's on his name. If he's called Jack Smith, he would not be, he'd never have got the Derby or Chelsea job. And even if he had got them, he wouldn't be in and around the Premier League for yeah. me, I don't think. There's a reason why championship clubs aren't touching him as well. There's reasons, wages, and, you know, I just, for me, no. Um, Dean Smith's a fascinating one because this is where I think Weber has his, his structure. Is his eyes slightly looking at, you know, almost flirting with a manager that has gone and got promotion before, plays decent football, has also kept the team in the Premier League. Yeah. I can see why Villa sacked him because he's not the manager to take them to the next step. Mm. I was always thought he played good football at Brentford, but again, there was always something missing. He had very good players. Mope, for example, just stands out as a Andre Gray when he was really in form as well. They never actually got in the top six under him. It was only under Thomas Frank that obviously mm. they've gone on and and Mark Warburton as well before him that they got into the playoffs. But uh, yeah, for me, I, I can see why that might be a potential, but it does seem like a lazy throw of the yeah. dice. He's just got out yeah. of a job. I would prefer him to Frank Lampard, though, because he knows how yeah, to yeah. team better. Again, very possession-based. I, I can only see Norwich going for free agents, really. Mm. I was That's why I'm surprised by the Canucks. We, we just played the, paid the compensation for Farker, obviously, and then three or four backroom yeah. staff. That's a lot of money. Like we're it is ideally... a lot of money. Norwich don't have a lot of money, and that's the thing when we go back to as well. You either have to get a free agent or a name who's in a club from a smaller country because... We can't have too much ambition in terms of them wanting a new squad because, you, for me, I don't think you get anyone in January. I think no. this squad is what you've got. Yeah. The, the loan player, the loan quota is full unless you get rid of Gilmore, which well. could potentially happen. So that's one loan signing. I don't think there's much else. I really don't. The other, the other few loanees will stay. Of course, Norman's been brilliant. Brandon yes. Williams is needed. Um, who's the other one? I've lost my lost my head of the third one. But yeah, they'll all stay, won't they? In terms yeah. of. Uh, kind Can't of back. being loans yeah so this is the squad you've got for me Lampard isn't good enough Dean no. Smith I don't know I, I, I could warm to that but it would be lazy Knutson I mean we're, we're guessing really aren't we it's, yeah. it's the, the attractiveness of the unknown but he's done bloody well on very small resources What he, mm. where he is currently yeah like we say that seems a good fit the other two not so much and also with Dean Smith like he's gone Brentford Villa and then comes straight to Norwich. I feel like he probably wants a timeout, or a bit like Nuno has gone Wolves, Spurs, probably wants a bit of timeout. You know what I mean? Um, any other names that you fancy that either haven't been linked at all or have been linked and you think, well, oh, maybe I've think I've seen Favre linked, ex Borussia Dortmund, yeah. of course. Um, he did turn down Palace, though. Yes. So. Yeah. And again, defend- <laughs> I always keep going back. I don't think Weber's going to go this, this route, but defensively was probably, again, quite open at Dortmund. But does play beautiful football. And again, that's a big name. Like you, say, like you say, rejected Palace probably makes you think he's not coming here. Quite old as well. An older statesman, I don't think, would that Weber link, would mm. it be as in his 60s, wanting to be not bossed around, but, you know, yeah. have someone who has full control. It would be interesting. Very good coach, though. And, Again, Dortmund pedigree, and he did well at Dortmund for his first few his first season, then kind of faded away. But I can't see that one. It would be a wonderful link, obviously. Dortmund, whoever loves Germany, he's been there a couple of times before. I, I think he's too big a name on the continent to be able to come or want to come to Norwich. I don't think he needs to. Um, I, I've always wanted to go Nuno simply for the defensive structure, but then he did have great players at Wolves and Tottenham would have really hurt him, I think. Just that whole thing was wrong there. Uh, yeah. For me, I just want a defensive structured coach who will then be able to still be open to attacking football or be able to attack, not Chris Hewton-esque where you're drawing nil-nil and you'll take it. It's it's Hewton's wet dream for a one-nil from a corner. Yeah. No, it's that defensive discipline first, get that sorted and then be able to know how to attack. Because like you say, our team really is is probably set up for a counter-attacking style, really, with the, the wingers we've got now. Um yeah, for me, it's a tricky one. I, Lampard, I, I just, I still can't see. I, I think Weber's having them, the the local media and the the, the wider media on strings. To be honest, just yeah, to let mirrors. that big name be out there, you know, and let him be able to go on and deal with whoever he's actually getting in. I, if it is Lampard, I would be absolutely amazed. So we've done completely wrong in this video. Weber's gone completely against what he always has. Yeah, I can't see Can it being see Lampard. It? No, I can't. No. And. 
as long as it's not Chris Hewton, because then I will go and support. No, no, no. But Again, forward think, it's going to be a forward thinking coach, isn't it? Yeah. Or modern day. Can, can you think Frank? No. No, I just I don't fancy that. Like, I just as soon as I saw it, I thought, no, that doesn't fit. It doesn't fit mm. a philosophy. It's too much money. He hasn't achieved anything. Like, I can't think of a single reason why he would. Gerard is a bit different. He's done all right at Rangers, but there hasn't really been that link, which I was surprised at. He's but then, far bigger though, isn't he? Yeah, he's linked with Villa, Rangers isn't he? to Norwich. Yeah, yeah. And, he's and, with Villa and as well. for him as well, it's it's different with Frank because he can only go back down now because he's he's reached his pinnacle. Uh, yeah. For me, he'll never get back there. Gerard is only going one way, and that's to Liverpool when Klopp's finished. And I imagine that's more Villa he's looking at. And again, with him probably being, his managerial stock's still high enough for him to go, I don't need to drop down. I don't need to drop down yeah. to a lower Premier League team. I can go to a Villa, who I know are lower at the minute, but have so much money, he can get them up and then go to Liverpool. Um, yeah, that won't be it. That, that definitely won't happen. I can go, You can put your money on that. It will never happen, that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just to finish on, speaking of money... If I if you were to put money on anyone coming in, I think I'd put mine on Knutson. What do you think? Although that's the other thing with Knutson that we should have mentioned and we haven't. He the season in Norway doesn't finish till like end of December, January. There's currently five points clear at the top, going for a back to back title with like five games left. So is he he's gonna to want to stay until like January? And then you're thinking, well, I, I don't really want to be a bat manager until January. That sounds dodgy as as you like. Yeah, I think it's just the the pull of the Premier League, isn't it? That's the main thing. But again, is this guy really going to be that money orientated when he's on the verge of, you know, um, Breaking winning a league again, winning yeah. a second league, and he's in a European competition, which is him pop. But they are doing well in that competition. Yeah. I just keep looking at this Lampard thing and thinking he he won't go away. Um, he'll want the job, won't he? That's he will he will put himself there because Premier League, mate. He, he's a win win yeah. in terms of, of Premier League. It's an attractive role, I think, for the with the young players. He's he's he does he does like to go for the younger younger generation. And uh, no, uh, for me, he's not good enough. I would no, I would not. rather I'd, I saw a tweet that perfectly put it. I'd rather rehire Daniel Farker than yeah. Frank Lampard. Yeah, Daniel Farker is better than Frank Lampard. So let's not let's not go there. All right, let's leave it there for now. I'm sure there'll be plenty of developments over the next sort of 48 hours. So imagine we'll be back with you fairly shortly. But until then, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and take care. Cheers.